In this video, we're going to discuss amino acidemias, or inborn errors of amino acid catabolism. We're going to describe how they're detected in the United States, how you might predict the consequences and treatment of those particular conditions, and how to develop a dietary management plan to help these individuals. Amino acids have unique catabolic pathways. All 20 amino acids are catabolized in slightly different ways, and those involve a large number of enzymes. There are pathogenic variants in those amino acid catabolism proteins that could impair that catabolism. For example, in Michigan, all newborns are tested for about 50 inborn errors of metabolism. Among those 50, 14 of them are amino acid specific disorders. If you look at this list here of the ones that are tested in Michigan, you can see that some of these disorders are associated with specific amino acids, and it's quite clear. For example, arginemia, which is characterized by a buildup of the amino acid arginine, or hypermethionemia, which is characterized by a buildup of the amino acid methionine. In both of those cases, the disorder is a protein that would normally be involved in the catabolism of arginine or methionine. Since that catabolism is impaired, arginine or methionine builds up in the blood, often with pathological consequences. So let's go through one example, phenylketonuria, or PKU. When phenylalanine is being catabolized, it is first converted to tyrosine, another amino acid. Tyrosine is then further catabolized into other parts, but let's just focus on the phenylalanine to tyrosine conversion. This is catalyzed by an enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase, and it's the deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase activity that underlies PKU. As such, individuals with PKU are unable to break down phenylalanine, so their phenylalanine levels over time will build up. Consequently, tyrosine is now an essential amino acid because the body can't rely on the conversion of phenylalanine into tyrosine. There's several damaging outcomes to PKU. This includes seizures, hyperactivity, developmental challenges, and even early death. So it's very good that we can detect this at birth and start treating it right away. It's treatable because you can provide a diet that is low in phenylalanine and relatively high in tyrosine. Now it can't be completely zero in phenylalanine because you still need phenylalanine, still an essential amino acid, to make all the proteins that have phenylalanine in them. In general, amino acid disorders are typically identified at birth and they generally involve the catabolism of one amino acid, sometimes two, but almost always one. The treatment is a specific diet. That specific diet is gonna be low in total protein. That's because most whole proteins contain all the amino acids. And importantly, very low in the specific amino acid that's required. If that amino acid is an essential amino acid, it still needs to be present at some level, but it has to be at just enough that it can allow for protein synthesis, but not enough that it's gonna build up and be toxic to the body. To ensure that it doesn't build up, there's generally monitoring of blood levels of the affected amino acid, and there's a specific range where the patient has to keep their levels in that range. For example, for PKU, you would monitor your blood phenylalanine levels, and if your blood phenylalanine levels go up too much, then you know that you need to adjust your diet to reduce your phenylalanine intake. But what about a partial loss of function? Up till now, we've been talking about pathological variants that cause frank disease. If we look at genomic databases of generally healthy people, and we look at phenylalanine hydroxylase, shown here on the right, you can identify pathogenic variants of phenylalanine hydroxylase in about one in a thousand people. But that incidence is much lower than the prevalence of PKU. This suggests that there may be some people that are less efficient in phenylalanine catabolism. It's not so inefficient that it results in PKU, but there still may be some impairments of phenylalanine catabolism. Now, if this was the case, how would you test for this and determine whether or not a particular variant in a population, which is subclinical, is still involved in inefficient phenylalanine catabolism. In summary, there's a variety of inborn errors of metabolism. These affect both protein and amino acid catabolism. There's 14 that are tested for in birth in Michigan and most of the United States. Since these are detected at birth, they can be treated aggressively from birth. Generally, the treatment involves a restriction, but not total elimination of the affected amino acid, followed by careful monitoring of blood amino acid levels to ensure that that amino acid doesn't build up. Amino acidemias are quite rare, and they're detected quite early, and therefore can be treated, and people can go on and live generally healthy lives if it's detected and treated properly. However, on the other side, there may be some people in our population that have subclinical impairments of amino acid and protein oxidation. You could detect this by monitoring amino acid levels in somebody in a period of protein catabolism, and determine if a particular amino acid is building up because its oxidation is not as efficient as wild-type counterparts. 